Hello everyone, welcome to today's PlagueCast. I'm Shiki, and we will be discussing the Spring 2021 anime season and my impressions of them. Now keep in mind, we won't be discussing every single anime, just the ones that I'll be watching, because there's some that I do not want to even stomach watching or deal with watching, which is a lot of the sports or idol anime. Yeah. But before we begin, there are two shows that I do plan on watching that are still a bit out for this video, but by the time, well, one of them at least starts airing, it's going to be halfway through the season. So I just wanted to kind of mention these two, and I will be covering them in full once the entire season ends. Um, and that's going to be Yusuke the Black Samurai, which starts on April 29th, apparently. It's on Netflix. And then uh, Hathaway Flashes, uh, Hathaway's Flash Gundam, excuse me, which apparently starts on May 7th, which is quite a ways out. Uh, that's at least going to be, like, what, three weeks out right now? So that's going to be a bit. Um, anyway, the rest of them we'll be going through. Some you may have heard of, some you may have not heard of, but I'll be discussing a little bit of them. And I'm going to try not to ramble, since there is 30 of them, and I want to get through this in a decent amount of time and not ramble on. So, jumping right on in, let's start with Saw I'm a Spider, So What? If you watched my last videos, you'll know this one, because it's a continuation from last season that's going to this season. It's a 24-episode, uh, so it's currently on episode 14. It's the last one, I think, that was released at the time of this video. And it's more of the same. If you enjoyed the last part, last season, you'll enjoy this season. I... I'm not liking that it's focusing so much on the non-spider characters right now, in my opinion. It might just be the one episode I watched recently, though. But, like, I wanted to focus more on the main character. That's just me. Moving on to the next one, Mars Red. Now, this one is interesting, but I can't see it being an amazing blockbuster show. At least, at least for me, personally. So, it takes place in... Um, I think, like, pre-World War II Japan. Pre-World War II Japan, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, there's vampires. Yeah, that's the main kicker on this show. There's vampires, and they are trying to... Uh, these This group here, they're part of the government, and the government's either trying to um, convert vampires to their side as soldiers or to exterminate vampires. That's their, uh, their goal there. Um, and, of course... Uh, they don't want to let people know that vampires exist, so it's all secretive and hush-hush, and they're a, kind of a secret government organization and all that good stuff. So, so far, it seems interesting. But will it be that for the rest? Who knows? Keep an eye on it. Next, we have It's Too Sick to Call This Love, which is a, uh, a romance comedy, I'd say, of this season. Yeah. Voice is high-pitched because I'm not sure about that. Anyway, it takes place around the two in the middle, a uh, high school girl and an older, uh, I think he's like 20-something businessman or something like that. And uh, high school girl is uh, friends with the guy's sister, and that's how they, well, they don't meet like that, but that's how they keep running into each other. Um, anyway, the guy's kind of like a player or whatnot, or has been, just kind of flirtatious and messing around with women a lot and whatnot. Um, but his life is saved by this girl, and then he ends up like falling for her because she tells him he's gross. And he's like, huh? No one's ever talked to me like that before. It's weird. It's really, he's like really obsessive about it, but it's kind of cute too. It's, uh, it's, it's interesting. It's definitely one that you should check out if you're into romance or cutesy stuff anyway. But uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, moving on to the next one. This one, I have no idea what's going on with it. This is To Your Eternity, and it seems like it's a weird slice of life supernatural question mark? I don't know. Um, it takes place around this being uh, that was apparently created by God or something, and it takes the form of things that it's next to. Um, and so first it starts out as a rock, and then when a wolf dies on it, it takes the form of that wolf. And then the wolf meets this boy, and I'm not going to spoil what happens in the first episode because it's fucking wild. Uh, but stuff happens, and then he transforms again. 
And uh, from there, that's as far as I'm going, because there's only one episode out so far. It is interesting. It was kind of hard to understand what was going on in the beginning, though. So I will say that. But uh, it seems like it could be cool. So I'm looking forward to watching that. Moving on to the next one. This is a weird one. It's Gloomy the Naughty Grizzly. Now, I saw that and I was like, oh, it, it's a... Uh, it's just some child's show, like, right? I was like, it's going to be for kids. But I failed to notice the blood, <laughs> as you may have uh, in this this uh, particular picture since it's kind of zoomed out here, my little chalkboard here. Um, yeah, the uh, the bear's mouth and claws are covered in blood. The kid on his back is covered in blood. Uh, I watched the first episode, and it's only like three minutes long. So I think it's going to be like a short skit show kind of like that. But anyway... Uh, the bear's naughty. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Moving on to the next one. This one. Oh, baby, this one. It's going to be one of the good ones this season. Maybe one of my favorites. Although, So I'm a Spider is definitely going to be up there in terms of my, my tier list. And by the way, this is not in any particular order. This is just me going through the ones that I have uh, and getting the pictures and assembling them in a quick order. Uh, but this one. Is I shaved, then I brought a high school girl home. Long name, I know. So, this guy, he uh, gets rejected by the lady on his right, or his left, our right, and uh, wanders drunkenly home, runs into the high school girl on our left here, the furthest left girl, and basically ends up taking her back to his apartment uh, where... She, like, tries to get him to do her sexually, right? And he's like, I'm not into kids. And then they, like, start living together. So uh, it, it's going to be, like, a uh, an interesting romance, drama, comedy thing? I, I don't know about comedy. So far it hasn't really been, like, a, a slapstick comedy like normal comedies. But it definitely is going to be cool. I like the idea of how it, go, it seems to be going. So uh, I'll keep an eye out for that. Next up on the list, Godzilla Singular Point is, well, it's a Godzilla show. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, these guys, and I guess this girl, are kind of like science-y stuff. And they, uh, one day their town all of a sudden has this, like, paradactyl-looking monster uh, that attacks the city. And everyone's like, oh, that's weird. Probably just a one-off. And then they get swarmed by them. And then it's like, oh, shit. And uh, basically mysterious stuff happens. And Godzilla has yet to show up as of episode three. So we'll see what happens here. It's like an anime Godzilla, basically. And that's all there is to it. Yeah. Next one. Joran, the princess of snow and blood. It centers around the girl in the middle here, um, whose name I don't remember. I, I very rarely remember people's names in anime, unless they're, like, very special, right? And uh, she's basically an assassin with supernatural powers who protects the shogunate, which... Is it the shogunate of the Empire? I forget which one it is, but it's, uh, it, it's right... It's like a futuristic past. I don't know. It's hard to explain the, the timeline. It's, a, it's an alternate future, I'll say. And uh, basically, she's trying to track down the guy who killed her entire clan. And uh, she's working for the government's secret agency while doing so. Uh, that's how that goes. It, it seems interesting so far, and uh, I hope to see more of it. Next one, you may have heard about Eden's Zero. It is fairy tale in space. I don't know. I don't know how else to say it. It's it's fairy tale in space. Like everything about it, just screams fairy tale. And uh, even like the character design, like there's a cat named Happy. There's uh, a busty blonde uh, who, whose name is not Lucy. It's uh, something else. And then there's the, the Natsu guy with the black hair there who... Uh, I forget his name. But anyway, it's, uh, it's basically just more fairy tale if you're into that. Next, we have Reincarnated as a Slime Diaries, which is basically a slice-of-life version of Reincarnated as a Slime that takes place... Uh, between the first and second season, I think? It feels like. Yeah, I, I think definitely around there. Um, the animation style is completely different. 
it's got a lot of a softer, more cute tone to it than the uh, the show actually does. It's kind of like a just a side story. Basically, it's them going through their daily lives. It's a slice of life. You're not going to see anything like totally crazy or amazing like in the show uh, in this one. Why they made this and not the third season, I don't know. But, I mean, it's a different animation studio, that's for sure. So, maybe they're just tiding the fans over until next season. It's entertaining, to say the least. Next, we have another good one. Tokyo Revengers. OMG. This show is about the main character here with the blonde hair, except he's actually way older than this. So, this kid basically, well, he's not a kid, he's like a guy. He's like 20-something years old. And uh, he basically gets killed, but he instead travels back to the future to his middle school self, who's like a bit of a hooligan, and runs in like a bad, bad crown, like a, dual, a delinquent, you know. And uh, he just found out in his, like, when he was older, before he died, or died, air quotes, uh, that his middle school girlfriend died, and so did her brother and whatnot. And he doesn't know why he traveled back in the past or whatnot, but he, like, gets the shit beat out of him and ends up talking to her little brother and warns her brother about the fact that they're going to die on this specific date. And so her, and then he shakes her brother's hand and apparently winds back up in the future. And so her brother figures out that he can time travel by shaking his brother's, her brother's hand. And because of the information that he gave her brother back in the middle school era, he was able to become a cop and avoid himself dying, but his sister still died. So the entire show is about the uh, this guy, not the one on the right, the one on the left who got the shit beat out of him. He is trying to go back into his middle school days to, to, to prevent this gang from assembling that caused her uh, death, his girlfriend's death. And uh, that's the whole premise. There was a episode zero which appears to be like the first four episodes combined into one, but like shortened. Um, it was great. It was amazing. And now I'm watching episode one and two, and I'm like, fuck, I already saw all this. Uh, but one and two have a lot more like stuff packed into them. It's not just like a jesty thing. So it's, it's pretty interesting, I'd say. Definitely wanted to watch out for this season. Definitely going to be good. Check it out. Next, we have our video game VR anime of the season which uh, is interesting. It's a full dive. The ultimate next gen full dive RPG is even shittier than real life. And that, that my friends, is the title of the anime. Um, basically this kid, the, the, the scared looking guy in the front here, he's trying to get this new game, but uh, this like busty silver haired gal who's at the store is like, I'll give you this game instead, because the other one was too much for him. And uh, he's like, I'm not buying that, blah, 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 blah. And she tricks him into buying it. Uh, and she says, I'll play it with you because I still play it, blah, blah, blah. It's like an older game or something like that. So he goes home, plays it, and the game has, like, full pain. It's just, like, muted down a little bit, which other games apparently don't. And long story short, he ends up killing his childhood friend. Um, and because of that the game just spirals downward from there because that's like a dead end route according to the gal so he's trying to figure out a way to survive in the game after killing his childhood friend and all that good stuff it's going to be an interesting show i think i don't know we'll see how it goes next up season two of how not to summon a demon lord this one has all of our favorite cat girl busty elves doing their stuff and our favorite demon lord whose head is cropped out in this picture because no one really cares about the demon lord's face nah you just want to see the elf with the giant titties and the lowly cat girl right and of course the uh the, the lowly demon lord and the uh the demon maid gal and all that kind of stuff anyway our story starts out in season two with uh, our demon lord heroically accidentally saving a high priestess of the church and she mistakes him for God. And so she, being for some reason attacked by the church in an assassinate that attempt, asks him to take her to some high paladin who is off doing something somewhere else because he's apparently going to help her. So 
being the guy that the demon lord is, a pushover inside, but actually a, a demon lord on the outside, masking his insecure, doesn't know how to deal with a girl's interior, agrees, and then they end up going there. And that's basically how it uh, starts out. Yeah. Moving on. Shaman King. The, uh, the, the re, re, it's not a remake, it's just like a, I guess it's kind of a remake, because apparently they're like rushing stuff, which, hey, whatever gets us past that fucking little shit Manta, like, quicker, I'm okay with. Like, they could just cut him out of the entire show and I'd be happy. I hate him. He's shit. He's the worst character in anime I have ever had the displeasure of viewing, and... I actually might just stop watching the show because of him. Yeah, that little little blonde-haired midget guy. Uh, I hate him. His voice is annoying. He doesn't add anything to the show. You can literally ignore everything he says and act like someone else is saying it, one of the other characters in the area. And he doesn't add anything. He doesn't need to be there. He's literally there so you can laugh at him and have like someone else to like just be there in comic relief kind of stuff, right? He's one of those characters. A bad character. Anyway, some people are going to say, Wow, fucking dare you! Because apparently this show has a very large cult following. People who enjoy it. Um, other than that, the show's okay. It's not great from what I've seen so far. Which is basically uh, them having two fights in a empty town street for some reason. <laughs> They just randomly attack each other in the streets for some reason. It's weird. They control spirits. Check it out if you want. Moving on. We've got Vivi, a Fluorite Eyes song. I think the name of it. This one is interesting as well. So, basically, in a world where AI have taken over, everyone dies. The end. But... Thanks to one scientist, he sends back this AI, this advanced AI, to who possesses this bear. And he tries to convince this old AI, the, uh, the, the blue-haired gal here, to help him prevent the future of AIs destroying and killing humanity. Yes. And so, she begrudgingly accepts because she only wants to sing and make people happy, but the... Advanced AI managed to convince her to help others because if humanity's dead, who's going to listen to her song and she can't make them happy when they're dead? And so they go through thwarting terrorist acts to prevent uh, like AIs from being hated and despised and basically preventing them from like wanting to kill humanity. That's the whole show, it seems, from what I've seen. It's interesting. It's got great like animation as far as I'm concerned. And, uh, Vivi's cute. Mm, yeah. There's also a lot of, uh, like, time hopping. Like, the first episode takes place one year, and then, like, decades go past. Or, like, a decade goes past, I think, maybe. And then it picks up on the second episode or something, which is interesting. Yeah. Moving on. Combatants will be dispatched. This one... I was looking forward to because it had a blonde loli, and I like blonde lolis, especially if they right, have they red eyes, because those are those are great. Like uh, Kanade, not Kanade, blah. Kanade was just one of the other lolis I like. Like uh, Yami from To Love Rue, or Yue from Artificer, or uh, I think I think Eve from Black Cat also has red eyes, if I remember correctly. That's my type, at least for lolis anyway. I do like them busty ladies as well. And with pink hair as well, it's great. I don't know. I just like cute girls. <laughs> but the blonde hair is nice. Anyway, this one is uh, basically really pervy and itchy, and uh, the main character is a huge perv, and I'm not sure I like it. I don't know. It, uh, it grew on me in the last like episode, but... The first one is really cringe. I really hate the main character. And, uh... I, I couldn't tell at the beginning if things were, like, serious? Or if it was just being chuny. Uh, because it was just so... Weird. Yeah. Weird. Anyway, um... 
the main character, Agent Six, goes uh, with this AI android Alice, the blonde haired gal here, uh, to a new world to dominate it, to steal resources and stuff like that for their world. That is, they're currently trying to take over because they're part of this evil organization. And, uh, yeah, that's how it goes. And uh, it's interesting, to say the least. All right, moving on. Dragon House Hunting. It's about a dragon who's uh, looking for a house because his parents kicked him out. Well, his dad kicked him out, I think, because uh, he's a bad dragon and he failed to protect their egg because he's a kid and his stats are low and he sucks and he's a coward. Uh, basically, it's a cowardly dragon trying to find a house and this elf in the middle uh, is trying to help him find a house because apparently the elf is a realtor trying to help monsters find their homes. That's all there is to that show. Really all there is. They're just going house hunting. It's a comedy. Get ready for that. Next up, we have Seven Nights Revolution which is apparently based on a game that I've never played. Um, basically, these knights fight against these creatures called Physis or something like that. It's like P-H-Y-S-I-S, I think, or Sysis, Sy something like that. I don't remember the exact spelling or how it's pronounced. Anyway, they have these, like, uh, these guardian cards who are like previous heroes from old lives who grant them power to fight. And uh, they take on their, like, appearance, sort of, and their armor and weapons to destroy these things that are threatening humanity. Uh, that's kind of how it goes. Yep, moving on. Next we have right here, the saint's power is omnipotent. It is a isekai, but it's a weird one. It's not a, yeah, I'm going to get isekai, and then I'm going to be a badass. It's... I'm going to get isekai and then I'm going to study at the uh, the local uh, alchemy academy and uh, make potions and cook. And apparently because I'm a saint, uh, all my magic potions are like, I think it's like 20% better than everyone else's. Or like 50% better, I think it was what it was. Yeah. And anyway, that that's the whole gist of the <laughs> story there. She uh, gets summoned to another world by uh, the, the kingdom or something, along with some other girl who's also a saint. So there's two saints, but you never see the other girl, at least not yet. And apparently the, the prince of the kingdom is, like, sheltering the other saint. And so that's causing problems for the kingdom because uh, the saint's supposed to be with the soldiers and they're not letting the saint be with the soldiers to, like, support them against, like, the demon hordes or whatever's going on, or the monster hordes. I forget exactly what. There was a lot of alchemy and making potions and uh, this girl getting horse rides by a prince-like character. You know what? This show's weird. <laughs> but I like it. It's going to be a decent one to watch. It's definitely going to be one to pass the time. So, moving on. Blue Reflection Ray is an odd one. It is is your magical girl anime of the season i think in addition to the, the the pretty cure that's coming out as well um anyway it's about these girls who are reflectors is what they're called who uh, uh from what the first two episodes came up with there's the ones that wear the red rings who are trying to take the feelings from girls who are having problems and turn that into power maybe i don't know a cut off like the last episode cut off before they could detail why they were doing it um and anyway then there's the blue reflectors which are trying to stop the red ones yeah i don't know i'm watching it mainly because it's something to watch not because it's good um it's an odd one I'm waiting for, like, a Madoka Magica spin, like a twist, where, like, everyone just fucking dies, right? But, uh, hasn't come so far. I don't know. I'll, we'll see how far if I get into this further, or if I drop it, but, uh, this is one I don't really recommend. I'm just mentioning it because I'm watching it, and that's all. 
Next, we have The World Ends With You, which is apparently also based on a game, like a PlayStation game, like a normal PlayStation game, I think. I don't know. I don't know. I never played it, never heard about it until I watched this anime. And uh, basically, the characters are dead, and they are in a, an underworld kind of thing. But it's like a mirror world of our world, and they have to do these missions uh, that these you know, Grim Reapers basically you know, put up. If they beat the missions, they can advance the next day, and they have to survive like seven days, I think it is. And if they die, then they die. But if they survive, they apparently can come back to life or like have their wish granted or something like that. I think that's what the, uh, the gist of it was. But our main character has amnesia and uh, doesn't remember who the hell he is, except for it's like his, his name. Uh, and that's pretty much that. They're doing missions like fighting things or helping people subconsciously, kind of. It's interesting. Next, we have Battle Athletes uh, Dayundakai Restart. I could not find an English translation for that Dayundakai thing. But apparently, this is a, a remake of a really old anime that was like in the 90s or something. Or like maybe even earlier than 90s. Maybe it was like 60s or something. I don't fucking remember. Anyway, it was really an old animation style. When I looked up the thumbnail for this, I was like, wait, this has an older one? Anyway, uh, this brown-haired girl here, she's the main character. And the plot of it is that um, these girls are all training to be uh, Miss Cosmos or something, I think, like that. So they compete in, like, running or mountain climbing or, like, just physical activity, like sports, basically. It's just sports. Um... And with it being a sports anime, there's plenty of good shots of them in really tight clothes and their asses are very nice, if that's your thing. Um, honestly, I was not expecting that. That's nice for me, being the pervert that I am. What I was totally not expecting was for one of the girls to strip down in front of these very shady men and cry as they ogled her. That was fucked up. I will say that's fucked up. I hope there's not much more like that in this show because that's fucked up. I do not want to see that shit, okay? It's different than me doing it in my world versus their world because it's like, that's the same fucking world, right? Like to me, this ain't real, but to them, that shit is real, right? Like, fuck. I wouldn't ogle people in real life. That's just fucked up. At least, like, not be like, hey, strip. Yeah, do it. It's, it's fucked up, man. It's real fucked up. But uh, that kind of made me, like, wonder what the hell's going to happen in this show. Because in the beginning, like, some shady stuff was going on in the first episode. And then the second episode, there was that. And I was like, uh, what? So I'm concerned about the future of the show. But we'll see what happens. Maybe it'll be good. I mean, the rest of the show, besides those little encounters with that group of old, gross men, um, has been very, like, yeah, we're friends. Let's all be friends. It's great. And, like, sunshine and rainbows and stuff. So, like, hopefully more of that. All right, motherfuckers. Let's talk about 86. 86 is a military anime and apparently what happens is this smaller nation is being attacked by a larger nation however the larger nation appears to have been overran with violent murderous AIs that they used in their combat drones but the combat drones took over and now the whole country's dead and all the combat drones are invading the smaller country and so they are defending. And the whole thing is about them defending. And in order to do so, the world has been split up into two groups. Humans and non-humans. And this is where it gets fucked. So our main character is a human. This blonde hair, not blonde hair, this, this white haired girl with the uh, like gray blue eyes. She's our main character. And she is part of the human class of people that live in this nation. Uh, all of the people who are people in this nation have silver hair and 
blue-gray eyes. And they are the military who pilot drones to take out the enemy drones. However, the drones that this country uses aren't actually drones. They are real people, piloted by these normies at the bottom, who don't have silver hair and blue-gray eyes. They have anything else. And they're basically treated like they're not human. Which is why, in the, like, news of the country, when any of the mechs piloted by the non-humans are destroyed and their pilots are killed, there's no casualties because they aren't seen as humans. And because humans don't die, there can't be casualties. And that does not sit well with our heroine, who uh, does not like to think of these people who are actually piloting the mechs as non-human. And it's something that she frequently yells at other people in her, like, who are actually human in their eyes. And be like, hey, like, fuck off, these are human and whatnot. And she, she's going to get in trouble for it down the line, I can see it. But uh, anyway, it's about uh, her and her new group, which is like the ace group, that apparently this Undertaker kid in the middle, the black-haired one, is uh, like an ace pilot, and every other, like, uh, operator, which is which the silver-haired people are called, any operator that, uh, like, groups up with Undertaker and tries to run things ends up dying, quitting, or committing suicide. Yeah. Interesting. But all the silver-haired people are, like, safe in, like, the middle of the country in, uh, like, their own little booths. They don't actually pilot on the battlefield, while as everyone else lives in squalor in the boonies with their, uh, mechs and stuff killing things in real life so yeah it's, it's an interesting show i'm definitely gonna keep watching it because it, it's a great i like military shows so this one's gonna be awesome especially because there's mechs i love mechs even though they're just like spider mechs but you know what i like it all right moving on to everyone's favorite smug anime of the season Please don't bully me, Nagatoro-san. <laughs> ah, this one's going to be hilarious. And also cute, because apparently it's a romance, too, and not just a comedy. Oh, I don't know. I've not read the manga. But I'm getting vibes that uh, it's going to be a romance. Yeah. Anyway, it's about this girl, Nagatoro, who bullies the main character who doesn't even need to be shown. Just picture a nerd with glasses who can't talk to girls. And, uh, yeah, you you got the main character. Uh, very pathetic person. And uh, Nagatoro here bullies him every day after school when he's in the art class. And they do things. And she bullies him and, like, yeah. Eh, and it's kind of like, a, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it better. Basically, she teases him is what happens, you know. You know how people tease the ones they like, right? Anyway, but uh, she'll do things like unbutton her shirt and tease him about, oh, I'll pose nude for you, blah, 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 or like stuff like that. And because uh, he's a, a shy little beta virgin boy, virgin boy he'll uh, he just go, like, no, no. <laughs> The entire time. The first episode was kind of cringe to me, to be honest. But it got better after the second episode. Once uh, he stopped being like a little bitch. And Nagatoro toned it down a notch, I want to say. Because <laughs> the first episode was like all in your face about it. Like, it felt just weird and awkward. But it got better on the second episode. And like, goddamn. If, if I wasn't watching it in real time as it came out, I would be binging this show in like a day because it, it's great. It's going to be a good one this season. Probably one of my top, probably top five, definitely, of the, uh, the season here that we're going to watch because it's probably going to be this one. So I'm a spider, so what? I shaved and brought a high school girl home. Tokyo Revengers. And then one of the other ones we have not yet mentioned is going to be my top five. But uh, we'll get to those in a moment here. Okay, moving on from this one. We have... Welcome to Demon School, Arumakun! Yeah. So, I didn't find out about this until, like, I was looking at the spring anime coming out. 
and I realized this is the second season that's coming out, and I was like, oh, huh. I guess I'll just watch the first season, see how it is. I mean, it looks really cartoony and colorful, so I was like, it's probably going to be just like a childish, weird show. But it actually turned out to be really fucking good. Like, really good. And uh, it was adorable and funny and hilarious and like everything it needed to be. So if you have not checked out Welcome to Demon School irma -kun, check it out. Definitely check it out. It has those old school anime vibes, right? It's got that like, that old school feel to it but it's good it's so good and the second season which is only one episode out for so far has been rather great just more of the same so I, i'm, I'm hoping to see that it continues being great because i think the first episode the first season had like 24 episodes so this one should have more as well anyway moving on i have been killing slimes for 300 years and maxed out my level is this one it is an isekai and uh, the, the not the first on the left blonde haired girl but the second from the left blonde haired girl she was an office worker who worked herself literally to death and uh, because of that she came before God or a god or a goddess I suppose in this case and the goddess was like yeah you worked yourself to death but I'm quite partial to girls and especially the ones that are like age 17 or something like that. And uh, she was like, what do you want? I'll like, I'll, I'll give you a power and uh, send you this new world and you can, you know, be reincarnated. And the main character was like, can I just be immortal? And the goddess is like, yeah, yeah you can. So, boom, sends her down to this planet. Uh, I was expecting it to be really slow paced and like, she was gonna, my first impression was like, okay, so she's gonna just want to live her peaceful life like she plans to, but like a year or two go by and she gets bored and starts adventuring around, right? Wrong. I was so wrong. Apparently, after the, look, in the first episode, what happens is she goes into town, figures some stuff out, figures out that she can just kill slimes every day to like earn a little bit of money to survive and so she does that for 300 fucking years same thing just over and over again kills slimes turns them in survives for another day and uh all that and eventually after killing 300 slime or she kills like 25 slimes a day for 300 years that's enough to put her at max level 99 yeah and uh she's apparently very op and as time goes by, the people in the town, who are human, of course, die out. And then they, like, uh, grow up and die and grow up and die, yada, yada, you know, all that. And she becomes known as the Witch of the Highlands. Because she'll come in and sell, like, potions she's made or, like, stuff like that. Or, you know, um, she just kind of is an urban legend there. And then after the 300 years goes by and she's level 99, she eventually uh, touches a stone that tells people her level in the guild hall where she turns in the slime cores to and she's like oh i'm level 99 and they make a huge deal out of it and then a dragon shows up and challenges her and like a bunch of people start challenging her to like fights and stuff like that and so her peaceful life slowly begins to unravel as her high level abilities come out but uh it's still her being slack goffy and like slice of life it's gonna be a slice of life isekai is what it's gonna be her and her uh friends or family in this case here kind of just doing their thing for endless time because she's immortal and I don't know if she can't die but she can't age so she can't die by like old age she might be able to die by like combat and violence and stuff but I don't know she's not had that opportunity yet it was close in one time but it was denied I was hoping to see if it would happen or not but eh Moving on, a weird one of the season, Shadow's House. I don't know what to think about this one, guys. It is, it is odd. It's about a living doll, which is the one on the right. And I say living doll, but they're actually just a fucking human. Let's face it, okay. I know your game, Shadow's House. Okay. But there's this nobility group, or this, this family of nobles called the Shadows, 
Um, and like you can probably tell here on the left, that's one of the shadows. Their entire body is made up of shadows. And uh, as they live, they produce soot, apparently. And like the more anxious or upset they are, they produce more and more soot. And so their living dolls um, clean up after them. But also the living dolls uh, act like their eyes and their appearance. So the living dolls have to keep themselves like prim and proper. And um, as you find out in like later episodes, they have to, as they're outside, they don't talk. They just like mimic what their, their, uh, their owner would be doing. So like you can actually see what their faces are doing because you can't see what a shadow's face is doing, right? Um, so that's what's kind of going on. So it seems like it's like a mystery, supernatural slice of life. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I'm expecting to have some crazy twist at the end where like the dolls revolt or something, but I, I don't get the vibe from that happening. Uh, I don't know. So far, it's it's just been a living doll gal whose name is uh, Emilio, I think it is. She's been like learning her job and cleaning up and getting to know her master Kate. Uh, it, it's really easy to remember their names in this show because they're used so often and that's the only thing of like substance that's in the show is their names because uh, everything else is just a black room covered in soot that uh, is getting cleaned and their dialogue basically. Uh, so far anyway, we'll see how it goes going forward. It's an interesting show. Moving on. The Pretty Boy Detectives Club, I think is what the ending thing is. It's Pretty Boy Detectives is what I'm going to call it. It's about a group of pretty boy detectives who solve mysteries. I almost had a stroke there. Um, yeah. So far, I'm not sure if it's going to take place over multiple characters that they're solving like mysteries for. But there's this one girl who's really fucking cute that they're solving a, a mystery for about a star that she saw that uh, if she can't find the star again before her 14th birthday, uh, she can't follow her dream to become an astronaut anymore or something like that. And, well, a bunch of crazy shit happens, and it's insane. So watch it. All the characters are very cute, even the guys which I normally would not say are cute, but goddamn if they aren't cute. Look at them. Look at the fucking sparkles and shit around them. Ugh. I hate it, but I like it. <laughs> Moving on. We have the rom-com where the childhood friend won't lose. This one is... It might be my number five for uh, good... Uh, my top anime this season. Uh, simply because... It took a turn at the last, uh, the first, at the end of the first episode, it took a turn that I was not expecting. Um, and that might push it to the edge. I uh, was not expecting what happened there. Basically, it's about the main character who is in love with the girl on the right. Uh, the main character is the black haired one there. And uh, he loves the girl on the right who's apparently this actress, this model, author, person, or something, I think. And uh, she gets a boyfriend. And her boyfriend is apparently another actor or something, and she's out of his league, according to his friend and whatnot. And uh, his childhood friend, the one with the clover in her hair, loves him, actually confessed to him. He turned her down, and apparently she's out of his league too. But uh, together, him and his childhood friend are trying to make... Uh, the other girl that he loves jealous to get like revenge because they were kind of like friendly before but they didn't actually like go out or anything I don't know it, it was weird uh, hard to explain without watching it but it was interesting and I am I'm real curious to see where this romance drama goes because the uh, the best friend seems to be helping him she's like hey we can pretend to be boyfriend and girlfriend right and almost kisses him in the first episode but uh he pushes her away and like bails out of the room uh but it seems like he does have feelings for his childhood friend because he blushes a lot i don't know i'm interested to see how the story plays out yeah and now on to the last one on our list before it gets too far into this 
It is, and I'm gonna butcher this guy's name. I think it's Cestus, or like Svestus, or something like that. It's a Roman name. Uh, the Roman fighter. It is about this slave named Svestus, who is a uh, uh, a fighter in like the Colosseums or something like that. And they they do boxing or like martial arts fighting for the Emperor Nero. Um, and basically, he has to win a hundred fights, and he will be granted his freedom. And uh, if he loses a single fight, he'll be killed. That's how it goes. So it's about him uh, being trained as a boxer and fighting people who are much stronger and more trained than him and uh, trying to survive. So that seems to be what it's about. I've only seen the first episode. Uh, the animation style is kind of eh. I, it, it switches between like a, a decent style and then it has like some of those CGI 3D gross styles that I hate. Um, but. I'm going to watch for a couple more episodes, see if it turns out to be decent or not. And if it starts going downhill, I'll probably drop it. Uh, again, it's just a fighting show, and I'm not really that into fighting or sports shows. Especially if there's no cute waifus in it. But, uh, yeah, everyone. That will conclude the Plague Cast today. Thank you all for watching. Um, if you have any cool anime that you think I should check out that I may have been missing. Um, feel free to toss it in the comments this season if there's one that you're thinking I, I would enjoy, I would like. Keep in mind, I don't like sport ones. I've seen uh, a soccer one that's coming out, like a card one that's coming out, and some other stuff that I'm not going to watch because I don't, I'm not into that uh, kind of stuff. But anyway, this concludes this one. So I will see you all for another Plague Cast in a couple of months when the anime end, and then I'll give my review and give you my top, uh, well, actually, we'll be going in order of uh, the ones from, like, bad to good, like we did last time with the, the winter of 2020 uh, anime. So, I am now thirsty from talking for 50 minutes long, so I'm going to wrap things up and say bye-bye for now. I'm flapping my arms, but you can't see it because my model doesn't move with them, but... Okay. Shiki, out. Bye-bye.